Been a bit hot and dry, eh? You know it's dry when you find buttons underneath the clothesline where the grass used to be. A few years ago, along with rainfall figures, I used to record temperatures above 35 degrees C. These days, I only worry about readings which are 40 degrees and over. Last year's rainfall was pretty good until mid-year, from when there was little or no effective rainfall and the dry set in. The creek stopped flowing, water holes dried up, the pasture stopped growing and the wind kept blowing. It didn't seem to matter from which direction the wind came, it blew in smoke, which added to the depressing seasonal conditions. We didn't see blue sky or stars for nearly a month. This is the small hole in the creek where we usually pump from. This is the fourth time it has dried up in the 35 years we have been here. We are fortunate to have a large pool of water which doesn't dry up to pump from. But many local people depended on collecting rainwater had to cart water supplies in. We have been through a few dry spells but not as severe or as acute as this one. Mature eucalypts, Sally Wattle and even Lamandra died in places. We have been making good use of fodder trees, willow and poplar, to supplement our livestock, who are a bit short of food. Essentially dry thunderstorms ignited fires, one nearby at Myrtle Mountain, which, while not affecting us, certainly impacted on others, and contributed to the smoky conditions we experienced. Most of the smoke blowing in from fires well to the north and the south of us. The best of it was in early January, when the sky turned a red-orange colour and stayed that way for some days. The scene was apocalyptic to many, and together with the predictions of approaching bushfires and the evacuation of holidaymakers, the place went a little crazy. A routine shopping trip to town was made unusual because of the smoke and orange-red sky, the supermarket shelves depleted by panic buying, no diesel available at any of the local fuel outlets. The next day went one step further, when the smoke was so thick that even the red light couldn't get through, and it was dark at three o'clock in the afternoon. While walking between our house and shed, my wife Kate heard something flapping past her, followed by a plop. Next morning, there it was, a deceased wood duck. The ash irritated our eyes, and covered every surface, inside and out, just like a dust storm out west. Constant maximum temperatures in the high 30s and low 40s caused most locals to seek shelter from the heat for a good part of the day. The sun, when you could see it, was at best just a dull blob in the sky, but at sunrise and sunset it was spectacular, as was the moon. We did receive a couple of drops of rain during January, but the build-up of ash and charred leaves on roofs and in gutters meant that this runoff was best diverted from rainwater tanks. Not an easy thing to do when they are in need of a top-up, but necessary to avoid tainted drinking water and tanks full of gunk. We had been lucky up until this point not to have fire on our property, but that situation was to alter with the beginning of the new month. But that is another story. <laughs>